welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R and the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And this is one of my weekly wrap-ups. I think it is the complete second week of July. I'm a little foggy on my dates, though. The campaigning season has kicked off with some more forums than usual and that's just because early voting is coming up well it it's now started so then that's kind of pulled back a little bit there was one form after early voting started so yeah <laughs> uh. all of this just means i am going to be exhausted all the way through november but that's okay Jumping into my reading wrap up. Still reading a lot of graphic novels. And I finished Rat Queen's Volume 3 Demons, Rat Queen's Volume 4 High Fantasies, and Rat Queen's number five, The Colossal Magic Nothing. And I have thoughts. So really loved volume one, really loved volume two. And then volume three, instead of focusing on D, we focus on Hannah and we go back to her old school because she's looking for her father who has gone missing, which has interrupted her communication with her mother. And we find out her mother's dead, and she's actually been communicating with the spirit this whole time when we've seen her talking on the phone. Phone. And I got really, really confused. I was like, okay, I, I can see where maybe Dee's story is going to take a little bit longer. And we have Hannah's story. And then with how this ends, I was like, all right really curious to see what happens in this next one and then it felt like in my fantasies whatever happened in three got retconned it all of a sudden hannah is back with the group which in sorry for spoilers in three she's not back with the group at the very end and i am just like huh what's going on and then if i remember right but it, they I think it was in this one they added another element there's this magical person going around around and people who are sad there he's taking or that person is taking out of existence and I'm like all right but then only Betty seems to notice these people are gone and then that's it you know they just kind of drop that from there yeah and then things just get weirder when from there and they do come back to that storyline at the end of this one. And I'm not very satisfied with it. And I finally think I understand why they keep using different artists is because they decided to go with alternate timelines, alternate worlds. And so I think that's why they brought in different artists to kind of show this is not the same timeline as the first one. Okay. After this one, it, I'm really trying to debate whether I want to continue reading the series. And I know that sounds horrible because the first two really liked, but then they slowly started going down for me. I have all of them. I think I will end up finishing them, but I need a little bit of a break. So then I read Royal Street by Suzanne Johnson because I was feeling like I wanted a romance and didn't actually... But I didn't want a straight contemporary romance. I like my historical romances, and I don't have any of them at the moment. And I didn't feel like rereading uh, one that I could get my hands on. 
I wanted something a little bit different. So I chose a paranormal fantasy instead. A lot of times they have romances. And this one didn't. Not exactly. This is also one of the books that I wanted to read for my 2000 through 2023. Read a book at read one book published in every year challenge. So it was already on my shelves as something to read. And I like paranormal fantasy anyway, or urban, like paranormal urban. It was under both. So this is an interesting one. It, I'm blinking on the main character's first name right now. I, DJ. Her name is DJ because, well, it's actually Drusilla, but she goes by DJ. That's what it was. This is set during the Katrina. Yeah, this is set during Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. I thought that was an interesting concept to be set during the hurricane and afterwards. You, she, DJ's not actually in New Orleans. She, she is one of two Sentinels who work there. And as a junior partner, she's sent to an alternate location to wait out the storm. And then the main sentinel, Jerry, who is her dad, for all intents and purposes, goes missing. And the Council of Wizards or Council of Mages, I forget what they're called. No, Council of Elders, that's what they're called. They call her and tell her, you need to go back. You're now in charge. Or you're now the head sentinel. And you need to go close breaches. So, so kind of in this world, you have magic users mixed, like hidden from mundanes. And there is a place they call by beyond and there you'll have, and in the beyond is the elves, the fae, most of the vampires. Um, you have people like old gods, and what they call the historical dead. And so historical dead are those who are famous people that peop as long as people are remembering them, they stay alive in the beyond and have the potential to be summoned back if somebody uses magic or if they find a way in. So those borders are tightly controlled. The hurricane has blown them wide open. So everyone's trying to kind of close them. So she goes back. She's determined to find Jerry. And this is where they talk about the different types of wizards. Jerry is what they call a red congress wizard, meaning physical, so it can like zap people uh, with magic. And DJ is a green congress wizard and she does magic through rituals and potions. And so it's just interesting to see, okay, we have a variety of different types of magic that is out there. So she goes back. One of these historical undead are in, is in her house because the hurricane blew away her wards. And from the very first chapter, you can see that there's not love lost between them, so he's trying to kill her. And then enters Alex who blows him away back to the beyond. And she's like, well, that was stupid because now he's going to come back even more pissed and it's going to be at me, not you. So I was like, oh, is this our love interest? We have this macho alpha male and she's like, you know, fighting him. And sort of, but so Johnson does some interesting things. She introduces another male character, which I think I'm actually shipping those two more of. Um, and his name is Jake. So I kind of see Jake and DJ having a more healthy relationship because Jake isn't so alpha male. And it's also fun to see DJ call Alex out when he's he's doing his alpha male thing with her. She's just like sexual harassment much. And the reason why this is refreshing is this book was published in 2012. This is the height of paranormal fantasy, having these alpha males who then the main character falls in love with, and we just kind of hand wave over some other problematic behavior. And in this one, DJ's like, 
that's problematic, that's problematic, that's problematic. What are you doing, dude? You're supposed to be my partner. Oh yeah, forgot that part. So Alex is an enforcer within this world, and so he's there to help her make the transition to be the solo sentinel. Since she's a green wizard, she's not seen necessarily as weaker, but uh, maybe not can handle everything with newly blown open borders to beyond. Yeah. It was fun. Especially if you like paranormal fantasy. It was a fun book. And I like, yes, that while there are vampires and there are shifters, we have other magical folk as well. And we got a little broader of a look. And again, New Orleans really is a character in this book as well, especially as the, most of the book is happening during the recovery from Hurricane Katrina. And you can see where different constraints, like having areas that are flooded, make it harder for DJ and Alex to do their work. So I really enjoyed this. This is a first in a series. But the book, first book does stand alone. So if you're like, I don't want to get into a series, you can just read the first book. I am interested in continuing with the series though. And so now I'm just waiting for the Choose Your Own Adventure Readathon prompts to go live. Chelsea Zhao said that they would actually be live on Sunday so that the other people in the world whose Monday start, they can go ahead and get their prompts on their Monday. And definitely I'm going to be choosing my prompt early because this week's going to be crazy. <laughs>